Good day, boxing fans. Saturday on ESPN, we're going to see boxing in the best of a Mexican tradition when Luis Alberto Lopez defends his IBF featherweight world championship for the fourth time against Angelo Leo, right there in the town where Leo was born, Albuquerque, New Mexico. I think it's going to be a great fight, a great blend of styles. If you're into watching that and breaking down the fight with me, then stick around. Sometimes you get a fighter that does everything all wrong and somehow they can do it so brilliantly they can make it work for themselves and they become these unconventional stylists and even great fighters sometimes. Thinking about Muhammad Ali that carried his hands low and then of course Nassim Hamed that threw power punches from way out and switch hit and also had his hands all over the place. Not to mention Roy Jones Jr. Also a style that you cannot teach a young kid just going into the gym to try and emulate. It takes a special kind of fighter, a special sort of reflexes and gifts to make that style work. Now, Luis Alberto Lopez. I can't say if he's going to be as great as any of those names one day. Maybe not, maybe he will. I don't think so. But he has become a world champion and he is one of those kind of fighters. If you look like at Luis Alberto Lopez, the way he fights, He's got his hands down low most of the part and he can jab, he does have a jab, but he doesn't really use his jab. He, throw, he jumps in with power punches, sweeping power punches from the outside and then he jumps out again and then he's, then he's off to the side and then he comes again with these sweeping power shots and he's got his chin up high in the air, his upper body is up straight and he, he, he looks like a one punch knockout loss to happen like they also said of Hamid way back in the beginning, but somehow it works for him and he's a world champion. He's had a great run of that IBF featherweight title and he's going to make, make his fourth defense now, as I've said. Now, Luis Alberto Lopez of that very unorthodox style. Uh, his record is, is 30 wins, two losses and 17 knockouts. He does wield those power shots with power because the way to, to beat him, at least in a in an in a, in a, in a academic or intellectual sense seems simple. You've got to not give him the room and the space to operate with those sweeping shots. You've got to get straight into his grill, right inside, and you've got to take advantage of his defensive flaws, or you've got to know what he's going to do, or where he's going to be before he does it, and you've got to counter him with shorter, more compact punches. It seems quite simple, the strategy, but yet none of the recent fighters have been able to do it. Josh Warrington had some success when he got close, especially with his left hook and the chopping right. He had him buzzed there towards the end of a fight. He had some success, but he couldn't sustain that success. And I think a part of it is um, Lopez does have power and he hurts his opponents enough to stop them from getting in. They, they find it hard to pin him down, hard to close the distance and to be there on the inside. And inevitably he busts them up or he just befuddles them and he keeps on winning. Now, can Angelo Leo upset the apple cart? He's a former world champion himself. He had the WBO Junior Featherweight or Super Bantamweight title, lost that to Stephen Fulton, who eventually would, 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 would drop the belt to the Oya Inoue. And Angelo Leo is a pretty, pretty solid fighter. He's 24 wins, only one defeat, that one um, to Stephen Fulton. And if you look at Angelo Leo, he's, he's got two ways of fighting. He can hang back and he can box, he can use his jab, he can move a little bit, but then he can also get right into your grill and do that through Mexican style, that swarming pressure fighting where he's on the inside. Now, Angelo Leo, I think, if I compare the fights of his that, I, that I've watched, the one against Cesar Juarez, where he eventually stopped him, he was, he was fighting for parts of a fight of a back foot, and then against his most recent fight against Eduardo Baez, he was more on the inside. I think Angelo Leo... He's slightly better when he's in your grill, when he's right in close. I think he's a little bit better there. It didn't work for him against Stephen Fulton, but Fulton is a different sort of fighter than Luis Alberto Lopez. It's hard to find somebody out there right now that you can compare to Lopez. 
Fulton is rangy, he's tall, and he's got quick hands, but I think his work rate is, is, is more consistent. He's, he's more of a volume puncher, and, and that and his hand speed helped to work, again, got him over against Angelo Leo. Whereas, whereas Luis Alberto Lopez, he fights in spurts. Now, the big key to this fight, I think, as I've said, this, 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 to beat Luis Alberto Lopez, if, he, if I'm in Angelo Leo's corner, what he'll need to do, firstly, utilize the jab whenever he can. When he comes in, come in behind the jab. Notice Josh Warrington, he popped that jab and he, 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 tagged, uh, he tagged Lopez a couple of times solidly with it, but he was never consistent with his jab. And of course, that has to do with a lot of what Lopez does. So I would say Angelo Leo, he's got to come in behind the jab. He's not going to hit it. He's not going to. He's not going to be able to hit Lopez that often. But jab him to his chest. Jab him wherever you can. Come in behind the jab and get on the inside. I think that's key for Angelo Leo. If he's on the outside with with uh, Luis Alberto Lopez, he's going to get pot shotted with those big shots that Lopez wings around. And then your only your only option will be to 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 get him on the counter. Of course, Lopez, as I've said, he does stick his chin up in the air and the upper body straight up like this. And, and, and it, it almost looks like, a, you know, when you were kids and, and school kids fighting in the schoolyards, you know, little boys come like that and they swing these punches. And it almost looks like that. Not being disrespectful, it almost looks like that. But he makes it work, does Lopez, because he depends on his reflexes to be out of the way when the opponent retaliates. And he generates a lot of power with those the, those swinging and those, those, those sweeping shots. He, he throws the shots through the body into the head and you can see it carries power and it keeps his opponent from getting settled and coming in on him. Now, the key thing here is, will Angelo Leo be able to, will he have a physical strength to move Lopez back? Because he's, he came up from a lower weight division and that's what, I, what, what worries me a bit about Angelo Leo. You know, he's going to have to use his jab. He's going to have to get an inside, I think. I think that's, that is where his chance lies with Luis Alberto Lopez. I can't see him winning the fight on the outside. And will he have a physical strength to do it? He's never been stopped. He's taken everything his opponents has dished out so far. He did mark up on his face quite a bit against Stephen Young. And I think if he can't get on the inside, there's a good chance Luis Alberto Lopez is going to mark up his face and maybe force a TKO or something like that. So... Angelo Leo, if he can get on the inside, if he can put Luis Alberto Lopez on the ropes and in the corners, he's got a good inside game. He's got nice compact punches. And I think if he can keep the fight on the inside, Lopez will be in trouble. But ifs and buts, if we were fruit and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. So can he actually do it? I wonder if he's going to have a physical strength to put Luis Alberto Lopez on the back foot, whether he's going to be able to walk through those power shots that Luis Alberto Lopez throws. If he can and he can do that, I think Angelo Leo can win this fight. He, the more compact technique on the inside, that's going to carry the day. But I'm sort of thinking, if I look at Luis Alberto Lopez, he, he beat Josh Warrington on the road, went back on the road, he knocked out Michael Conlon, and he's, he's beaten the slick boxer and Joet Gonzalez, and in his last fight against Rio Abe, the Japanese guy, you know, he, he, he fought with that funny looking way but it's exciting to watch and and eventually he busted up Abe's, Abe's eye the Japanese fighter so I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking I think Angelo Leo is gonna have his moments you guys must tell me in the comment section especially if you guys are sitting there in Mexico you may know these guys better than me who you got Luis Alberto Lopez or Angelo Leo how do they win and why do they win I'm just going to go with Luis Alberto Lopez now. I think he's, 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 he's having good momentum behind him. As I've said, there are obvious things there with Luis Alberto Lopez that you can exploit, just as there were obvious things with Roy Jones, Prince Nassim Ahmed, all these kind of orthodox fighters in the past. But what Luis Alberto Lopez does well, you know, throwing those unorthodox shots, for unpredictability, and his, his quick reflexes and feet has so far worked for him. And I think it's, it's going to take something more special than Angelo Leo to exploit that. So I think Luis Alberto Lopez, Angelo Leo, he might have his spots if he can get in close. That's a key. But I'm thinking the power of Lopez is going to bother him. And I'm not sure he's got the physical strength to really bull Lopez to that ropes and cut the ring off and keep him there. So I'm thinking Luis Alberto Lopez... 
his power is going to tell at the end of the day. And I think it will be a harder fight than against than they had against Rio Abe. But I think eventually he's going to mark up the face of Angelo Leo. And I think eventually he's going to just land those harder shots and, 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 and dominate by doing that enough rounds to win a decision. So I'm going for Luis Alberto Lopez by decision. I won't be surprised if he can score a stoppage. But Angelo Leo is a very live dog. One would be well, do well to take him seriously uh, if he can force the, the real estate, if he can make the fight happen at the distance where he's going to be the best, then he has a very good chance of winning. I just don't see it. Looking at the guys Luis Alberto Lopez has beaten now, I think Angelo, Angelo Leo hasn't quite been on the same level of opponents. And that's why I'm going for Lopez. Well, that's it, guys. Please remember, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thank you to all those who did. And until I see you again, remember to keep those hands up.